Hey everybody, it's your buddy's pal, Anthony. And as you can see with me today is my buddy, your pal. Hey, Archer. Hey, Steve. Uh, today nice. we are going to talk. Whoa, it's a little early in the morning, buddy. <laughs> are, are we okay up there? Uh, okay. Oh, you had me go. I didn't even notice that. I was like, oh, we have to stop and have a whole nother sort of conversation. Yeah. Liquid death. It is huh. the best water. Because of the can. And people always think you're drinking. Yeah. Ah, see that? We started rambling already. Both of us have, shockingly, in a movie theater, separately, seen the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And we're here today to talk about it. Spoilers after the intro. Steve, hit it, please. All right. So, first things first, you, you people who follow you on social, they uh, they already know, but you were seemingly less than happy with your return to theaters. I hated it. <laughs> I, I I said yeah. that after Black Panther, and I will say it again after Guardians. Different yeah. reasons, though. You're just waiting. Oh, you want me to say? Fair enough. No, I'm I'll saying say. you just hated it. You just weren't. Uh, wasn't your cup of tea too well, many last time last time it was the people last time I was like i'm I'm paying money and I gotta deal with people like talking in different parts of the theater all that stuff this time I loved that it was completely empty theater, but like walking through the bathroom the floor was sticky walking around mm-hmm. the the theater floor was sticky I sit in the chair it's a recliner seat and then I um like put my feet up at, on the bottom like kind of sitting cross leg or you know whatever. And then I realized, man, I was walking through a dirty ass bathroom with sticky floors. And now my feet are on this chair. I wonder how many other people do this. I wonder how many other things have been on this chair. Cause I know for a fact, there's no way they clean all these chairs thoroughly every single day. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. And well, at least the actual seat of the chair wasn't sticky. Then that, yeah, then you're in the That'd wrong type of movie theater. Exactly. That'd be a whole other thing. <laughs> But all right, all that aside, the final, supposedly final iteration of this team of Guardians, uh, I think we both think with a check big enough, everybody's going to come back for one more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, what, what did you, I didn't grade it yet. What did you grade it? Eight out of 10. Eight out of 10. I think I had less issue with it. So I'm going to, I was going to say nine out of 10. Okay. But uh, let's get into it. So like, they start off, uh, what do you call it? You know, they first of all, the music for anything specific about it. Again, James Gunn and the music works for me. I end up listening to his stuff on Spotify a lot, his playlists. Mm-hmm. So if you don't, if you're ever stuck or if you just want to listen to, you know, the songs, there you go. But uh, yeah, it kind of starts off. Uh, Quill is pretty much a drunk, useless guy. Did you watch this, the uh, Christmas special, by the way? Everybody out there, by the way, you should watch the Christmas special. It's free on Disney Plus, and it was pretty good. I did not. Did you? Did you? No. Why not? I forget. There was a reason, but uh, actually, no. There was no no reason in particular. I, I fully intended to watch it, and then just never got around to it. And I know I, I was watching like those Easter egg videos after I saw this, and they were like, "Oh, if you saw the." Christmas specials, some of this would make sense or more sense, but not super essential to this movie. And as I watched it, I didn't feel like I really missed that much of a beat. You didn't necessarily. It's just that in the, in the special, it shows he's still like kind of Quill is barely holding it together after Endgame. And uh, I don't remember if they actually, but it's a, clearly it's because of the more. I don't remember. Right. She de- Zoe Chanel wasn't in it. Not so did you know Zoe Saldana? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's clearly because of that. So I like that they kind of continued that. Uh, again, I don't know how much time has passed in that movie since Endgame. So it's I'm gonna assume it's quick. It's sooner soon enough after to where 
you know, it's like, all right, it, nobody's been like, hey, come on, man. It's been like 10 years. Get over it already. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did like that. I just like seeing everybody's role evolve. Like, I like how they've taken over nowhere. I, in the mm -hmm. Christmas special, for those who don't know, they say that they the Guardians purchased it. It's now their headquarters. They seem to have just, I don't know where the citizens of nowhere came from. Maybe they're the people who are there and some other refugees. But they have a whole community and uh, Star-Lord is the head of that community and the Guardians are, I'm going to say, they don't say this, but I'm going to say they're like their strike force. They still seem to go right. out and do shit, mm -hmm. but they're also in charge of nowhere. But uh, yeah, is there like, it gets going right away. You got to give it that. They do, they do kick it off. And I wasn't expecting, yeah. uh, like, I didn't watch a lot of the trailers, so I wasn't expecting Rocket to be the focus of the movie more or less in, which is funny because he's not in it for most of it except for flashback mm -hmm. which i was thinking i was like do i like this do i not like this and i kind of liked it in the end you know? i mean is that's the thing i was when the movie was done i was like was he the main protagonist because i feel like it could be half and half him and nebula like, he, i felt like there was a lot but, of nebula in it and I'm not going to lie at the end, you know, kind of skipping to the end for a second. I thought she would be the one given the title of leader of the guardians after her kind of being the one in the movie to be like, we got to keep, keep it together. We got to do this, stick to the plan, like all that kind of stuff. I was expecting like, based on watching that movie. Yes. That's what I expected too. I just, I didn't expect it just because I, I I'm pretty sure I've seen even her, uh, Karen Gillian, I think, saying, yeah, I'm done too. I think I've seen her saying that. I know I've seen Zoe and Chris Pratt and everybody else. Dave Bautista's like, yep, nope, I'm out. Bye. Yeah. He's already... You uh, know, he's Chris a... Pratt, I don't think, said he's out. Dave Bautista did. Well, well, Pratt said he wouldn't... Supposedly, he won't come back to the role just for money. Oh, So, right. we'll see. But it's also, like, it's... I don't know. Like, I, I don't follow Guardians in comics at all. So, I don't know if Quill's ever had a solo Star-Lord run. I'm sure he probably has, but I don't know how, I don't know how much of a solo hero he's ever been. Mm -hmm. So did one of the cats just do something? Um, she's looking at me crawling over slowly. Like she wants to do oh. something nefarious. Uh, hopefully yeah. not rock at your face. Yeah, hopefully not. So in no particular order, we have a, we have a, we mentioned a couple of things uh, towards the end of the movie. I, I liked, I loved that fight scene. There's a hallway scene, kind of a la Daredevil, a la, however Very you say much. It. Very much. And uh, I think they said it was a one shot too. I mean, cool. But it just was a great fight scene after, I mean, trying to think now, like they don't really, they did some cool stuff, but that, I think that was like the first, like really, they've had gun battles and stuff throughout the movie. They had, they had issues, but that was like, I felt like that was the action piece of it. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> that scene, even, even if I was to rate the movie like a six or whatever, that that scene would have elevated my score because I, I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed that, that, that hallway scene. And yeah, they did say it was a one shot. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So that, that was... Yeah, that's a highlight, definitely. I can't wait till that gets spoiled on the internet if it hasn't already in its entirety. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I, I like to rewatch really the, obviously, who doesn't, the cool whole world fights. I watch the Daredevil ones all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, did you uh, did you catch, I'm sure you caught it, but like, yeah, so for those who don't know, they revealed that Mantis and Star-Lord are actually brother and sister, which was... So the, that was in the it, Christmas special too, no? That, that was in the Christmas special because... Uh, you get the, I can't remember, I watched it a couple of months ago, but uh, she knows, Mantis knows, I don't, uh, and she's just, for whatever reason, she didn't tell him because uh, uh, e she felt guilt because Ego killed her, his mother, and, you know, she's a child of Ego, so she didn't want him transferring that baggage onto her, mm -hmm. which I thought was, like, really cool because it just showed you, like, she's actually... Like, you know, you kind of get, I mean, I got the impression she's just like kind of timid and maybe a little dumb, 
right. you know, and just has these powers. But like now it shows that she's actually, oh no, it's, it's more than what we've seen. It's just, it hasn't been her movie. It hasn't been her time to shine. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a nice little touch. And again, I don't know if that's comic accurate or not, but whatever. But it was also one of but those, I, like I, when they said it, I was kind of like, yeah, okay. Like I'm willing to move on. Like I, again, I didn't feel like, oh, I need to go back and, and watch the Christmas special because I need to see how they explained it. It was just like, yeah, sure. They dropped it and they moved on. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a nice moment in the, in the holiday special and like that's where it should have stayed and that's where it belonged. It didn't need to, to have them do that reveal in volume three, but it just would have started to make it feel bloated. And there was a couple of times like you and I agree, uh, I guess in the second act, right. They, they basically yeah. do another heist. So, yeah. all right. So hang on quick. I'm sorry. I'm jumping around. Who would have guessed Uh quick synopsis up to this point. Basically the movie starts with a literal bang because uh, Adam Warlock is seen flying through space and he is heading towards nowhere, crashes right through Rocket's bedroom window. The man just wanted to lay down. He was tired mm-hmm. and they start having a fight. And that, you know, brings all the other guardians around, except for Quill at first, because Quill's in the bag. Again, he's yeah. completely lovesick over Nebula. You know, you, you get the impression that he's just become a drunk asshole in his off hours, starting to bleed into work hours. So, you mm-hmm. know, HR is going to contact him soon. Uh, and then in the fight with Adam, they eventually, I forget how they end up repelling him. I think like Nebula stabs him. Shoot- stabs him nebula stabs him and he goes running and uh not before he does some serious damage to rocket so rockets in the infirmary they try to heal him with uh their tech and, and I, it's that i thought was a little bit of a plot hole because i was like all of a sudden the tech won't work on him i'm like yeah for two movies that we've seen so far and endgame and infinity war and the five years in between he never got injured to the point where he needed medical attention and like they find out there's a device on his heart that's stopping that like will kill him if somebody tries to save his life. (laughs) And considering that spoilers again, the whole point of the movie is the high evolutionary wants him alive, at least to kill him, to take his brain to study. You'd think he wouldn't do that because I'm pretty sure if your body dies, your brain dies too. And then it's useless for science. Yeah. I'm not a scientist who knows. But anyway, so there you go. And then you have, so, and then that's our movie off and running. They uh, scan Rocket. Nebula apparently can plug into, she's kind of R2-D2 now. She can plug into machines and do tech readouts, which I was like, all right. Uh, She's been upgraded, uh, which was cool. Like her arm actually literally, as we just mentioned, it became a cannon, it became a, a knife. So that was nice to see her just having more shit more toys are always fun mm-hmm. and then they scan rock she scans rocket and on the device or on some part of his implants finds like basically a serial number and they track it down and blah 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 so now they're off they're, they're gonna go steal a data module to find some code to let them save rocket okay we're off and running and in this like then we start rockets flashbacks of his earliest memories uh, in, in a cage, a hand coming in at him, and he's being experimented on, and we see the implants installed, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, we're reunited with Gamora. Did you feel she was even necessary? No. I, I And I saw, I don't know if it was like on Instagram or somewhere, that somebody claims James Gunn, I, I guess he already mapped all this out, and in mapping it out, didn't know she was supposed to die in um, Infinity War. Infinity War. So that's why she seems kind of out of place because it's like he didn't know what to, he didn't know how to use her because she was. It's like a different Gamora technically. So oh wow, maybe she, maybe she was supposed to die in this one by his hand, but it it. Allegedly, again, this and it makes sense as you know when you watch the movie, she seemed very much out of place, like she didn't belong there. Yeah, I didn't hear that part, but that does make a lot of sense because I mean, it basically it's when was the first guard? Well, hell, before the first Guardians, whenever that came out, she's like two or three years, let's say, before 
we see her in volume one. Mm -hmm. So she's still the hardcore Thanos uh, acolyte. Yep. And that's more or less the version we've got now. Although, uh, plot twist, she's a Ravager now, which I thought was, again, you get some payoff with that at the end of the movie, but I thought it was kind of weird. I thought, basically, I thought it was just a way to get Sylvester Stallone on screen for five seconds. (laughs) And uh, also Michael Rosenbaum. He's yep. the uh, diamond face dude. So, yeah, that was like, okay, it was nice to have the band back together. But it also, like, she did feel shoehorned in. And I kind of feel like she also would have been like, okay, if they were like, hey, listen, you know, we're going to say you actually died. Or we're not going to say anything. Do you care? Like, we're not going to use you. We want him to be suffering, Quill to be suffering this whole time. I feel like she would have been okay because I feel like. Her and especially Batista because of all the makeup were done. They were good. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't. She's here. She's a Ravager. And it's, they kind of, I think we had the same problem because Quill, did nobody explain this to him properly? <laughs> like what it is? Because well, he snap keeps saying, is... you forgot, you forgot. Yeah. He's like, you yeah. forgot, you forgot. And she's like, I'm not that girl. And yeah. it's like, so that was a little bit annoying. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, he can still be lovesick and everything, but just the fact that he kept saying, no, she doesn't remember, is like, she wouldn't remember. I've watched Back to the Future, like, a thousand times. She wouldn't remember. It's not the same person. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But, uh... But, so her being, you know, they're like, oh, we have to go get this data, whatever, and we have a connection. The connection is going to get us in. They pull up to the planet. The Ravengers show up, like board them, damage their ship by boarding them because they like cut holes in it, just yeah. to be like, "Oh, we were waiting for you guys." I was like, "I was like, okay, that's odd." And then the Rav, you're telling me like that living planet didn't notice that this pirate clan is like, like eyes distance from their planet, like they. That that whole sequence just seemed weird to me. Like there was yeah, no need no, to even have the whole Ravenger group. Yeah, no, there there wasn't. It made no sense. And also, I've only seen it once, and you've seen it more recently. So stop me if I'm wrong. But by the time they show up, didn't excuse me. By the time Quill and them show up and meet the Ravagers, hadn't Quill and them like blasted through three shields already or two shields? Yeah. So they were waiting. Not only were they not noticed, they were in. They were outside their last line of defense, just hanging out in space, just yeah. hanging out, waiting for them. I don't know. It, like, waiting it, for their their connection. Exactly, and then they disappear, no problem. And now you have the original Guardians back together. Although Nebula wants nothing to do with it, she's just there for the money, and she's you know insulting. Uh, you know, they, they go back, they kind of, re, they, well, they kind of repeat some of the jokes. Like, you know, nobody calls him Star-Lord. Now she calls him Quinn, yep. you know, like, because she can't be bothered to know his name. And uh, you're, you're a friggin' alien. She's calling Rocket a badger. How do you know what a badger is? It's make up any other word. Yeah. You know, it's like you did, the, he, he, like, I love the first movie. When the first movie came out, I was like, you know, this is how you do a space movie. This is how you do a Star Wars movie. The rest of Disney take notice. And I feel like they actually had like aliens, like other creatures, yeah. like with different with names. And now it's like, you're getting, it's the third one. You're tired. Oh, oh, he's a badger. But where, how would you even know that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So little thing that kind of was annoying, but yeah, that second act, uh, basically all Nathan Fillion. Yeah. I could have done without, like yeah. I could have, I don't know. Like, I, I don't have a better, I don't have a snap for this, like of how they could have sped it up, but just. Oh, I do. Oh, well, please help me out. <laughs> you know, they, like at that point, I was kind of like, this movie sucks. Like when I'm in that second act, I'm like, this movie sucks. They, they took from Star Wars in two different ways as we're talking through it. The first one, yeah, it, it took them work to get through the shields to get to where they were to wait for their connection, connection with the Ravengers. They were just chilling there and then just like peaced out, like mad easy. That was very much Rise of Skywalker. Like Rise of Skywalker, we got to 
get a map to be able to navigate through this whatever to get to where Palpatine is building his army. It was like right. really difficult. But then everybody else kind of just showed up. Like it wasn't hard at all. Like they just just popped in there. So it reminded me of that. And then the second thing in Rise of Skywalker, they have to go to one planet to get a device to then go to the second planet to find what they're looking for. They do the same thing here, but it's like, all right, we got to go find the data for this. So let's go to planet one. And then, oh, it turns out we can't even access this stuff. We need this guy's brain thing. You could have just skipped the middle part and been like, all right, rocket. Sorry, the cat's like so close to the soundboard. They're, yeah. they're like, all right, we got the serial number. It's created by this organization. Who runs this organization? The villain does. Cool. Um, oh, look, but this one guy is listed because there's somehow Google or whatever. This one guy is listed as head of data or, or something. All right, we got to go after. We got to go find that guy. Where are they? They're on this planet. Cool. So they could have easily just done that. In my opinion. There you go. No, hey. That that saved us a chunk of time. Because I, I did feel like it was a little long. And that, yeah, that cleans it up nicely. There's no... Yep. It, it just, like I said, it was just a retread of the... I thought that was a retread of the prison scene in the first it movie. It was. Where very much all, a prison it scene. It was. It totally mm -hmm. was. Except for they didn't all come together and like do the hero pose before they entered the command center. Like right. uh, Mantis and Drax are doing their own thing. That was like the two of them were funny together. But then, yeah, like it was just, it was also again just like too much. Like, I guess it was the first time that Nebula, uh, excuse me, uh, Peter and Gamora had been together in a while. Mm -hmm. So he's like just like completely lovesick and dumbfounded and like, you know, shooting a shot. And like that was just again a little bit too much. Like, I, I would have kind of, I would have liked it a little bit better if maybe he was over her to a little bit more, maybe completely, definitely more than what he was. And like, you know, make me miss that interaction that they really only had in the second movie. Like they had it a little towards the end of the first, uh, yeah, a little towards the end of the first, definitely in the second, or am I getting that backwards? They had it not at all in the first and more in the second. More in the second. Yeah. Okay. So that one, but anyway, at least whatever it, it took too long to finally get going. And then we're back to, uh, the main point, which is trying to fit, save Rocket, and you say James Gunn is sick. I don't disagree with that. I also say he knows how to pull up the heartstrings because uh, those all all the flashbacks where you see Rocket's origins, he has uh, three other friends: a bunny with a weird metal jaw and spider legs, a walrus with uh, kind of it reminded me of Doom. You remember the movie? Mm. Like the bad, the, the guy in the wheelchair at the end, when he turns, it, he looked like a walrus with a wheelchair attached to him. And they totally oh, yeah. stole that design. And, uh, what was, uh, what was Lila? Uh, she badger? was, she was kind of like a badger or an otter, not an otter, um, badger or ferret type thing, but with robot arms. Okay. But. So anyway, you, you you meet them, you see how he, he's experimenting on them and all these other animals and like that, that was like a little emotional. And I was like, holy shit, like Pete has actually like praised him. Have you heard that? Like they congratulated him on uh, being like the be it, this being like a great animal rights movie because it yeah. shows like, you know, what they suffer and go through. So that was mm -hmm. cool. She's an Not otter, cool by the way. She's an otter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, of course, naturally, because you've never seen them again when Rocket eventually makes his escape and they all die. It's like, yeah, damn. Yeah. I that part like, I was just, I was, I was sitting there. I mean, I went to like, the, there were other people in the theater and like, we all kind of like, Oh shit. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I think there was, I think there was a kid who kind of like started it. Like I heard somebody say, it's okay. It's okay. So I'm imagining yeah. that there was a kid <laughs> somewhere in the theater who started, who like did the bawling that I just couldn't let myself do. And yeah. the mother or whoever was comforting them. And I'm like, okay, yeah. at least it's yeah. not just me. So that got me going. But even but, that uh, segment of him, um, God, what's the bad guy's name again? I keep forgetting his name. The high evolutionary. Yeah. Even seeing him kill those animals and then 
him like joking around like, oh, why are you why are you so sad for? They're just saying like he was scarier to me and already a better villain to me than Kang the Conqueror. Like I more I was more afraid of him at that point than than Kang. I mean, I was definitely I agree with you on the afraid of him part. I haven't seen Kang. I haven't seen Ant Man still, so I can't neither have I. comment on that. Don't eat. Oh, <laughs> we saw Fair him in. Uh, we saw him in uh, Loki. Loki. Oh, that was a variant, but all right. Sure. <laughs> I won't argue with you on that. But no, he yeah. was a good villain, and I don't mind that. Spoilers again. I don't even mind that they kill him, <laughs> or seemingly kill him. Like you if know, they did, off camera. Which means he's which means he's not dead. No, they I thought that they killed him or like he was didn't didn't Rocket shoot him and then No, they, he, he holds the gun over after they take the mask off. Oh, and he's about to do it. No. And then he's like, No. He's like, you know what? I'm a guardian. And then he leaves. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Damn. Mm -hmm. Edit that out. Edit that all out. I will not edit that, that out. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> uh but it's All good right, because so they they, they they hopefully they stop killing off bad guys that they can reuse, you know. And yeah. I mean, even he, in his case, a... hmm? no, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, see, in 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 his case, you know, them just Rocket just choosing not to kill him, I thought was like kind of pointless. Like he didn't have some sort of arc of I'm learning not to be a mass murderer anymore. Uh, but there's only so many times they could be like. The, the bad guy, the good guy, and then the setting like breaks up and they kind of get split apart. So I guess you have to have those scenes where they're just like, I can choose to end this, but I'm choosing not to. But in this one, I was like, it, it didn't, I didn't think it made sense, but I wasn't like mad at it. You know, I, you know, going yeah. back to Star Wars, I, I would have, it would have made more sense to me in Kenobi for them to have done what they did in the force awakens where Kenobi and Vader are facing off. And then like the lamb breaks apart or something and they get split away. Cause at that point I'm like, Kenobi has every reason to murder him and just chose not to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well in that one, he was, I guess re like that, that act was him reaffirming his Jedi-ness yeah. as a Jedi, sh like, I mean, granted, I mean, obviously Anakin was the exception, but I feel like if a Jedi actually managed to disarm a uh, Sith or if they weren't in, like, because he, he, like, he owned Vader at that point. It, yeah. In general, I feel like a Jedi won't take life. So, like, if he, if they were fighting and, like, he ends up, whatever, cutting him in half during battle, say, he that's okay. Cause that was like still the battle of life or death, but like Vader was clearly down. So that would have been, if anything, that's, that's this, that's an alternate take where uh, now Kenobi falls to the dark side. Finally, after all those years by killing Vader when he's uh, barely breathing and has his helmet cracked open. Yeah. But I think he's killed for less. <laughs> I mean, Mace decapitates Django. Doesn't even, doesn't even blink. Just freaking, Yeah. You're dead. Yeah, I don't know. It's a very the the kill rule with the Jedi is kind of yeah, like this is, yeah a little bit yeah, but uh, so sorry. So off. then <laughs> no, that's okay. So <laughs> you are on the right show for that, sir. Yeah. So all right. So we have the pointless prison break, not a prison break on the living planet. That's not ego. And uh, now we get this thing, and Guardians are off to counter Earth. Yeah. Not that they know it's counter Earth at first. And now the third act, thankfully, brings us back. I I, th I think it started off a little bit slow still, because when they land on counter Earth, it's, instead of going to what's obviously the high evolutionary ship or someplace mm -hmm. in that vicinity and landing, mm -hmm. they park in the fucking suburb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. They park in the suburbs, and... They have a whole interaction with a bat family, which was yeah. weird. And by the way, we've had man bat and woman bat on screen now for the first time in a Marvel movie. They're going to get sued by uh, James Gunn, ironically mm -hmm. enough. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, I didn't even uh, realize there were bats. I thought, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, yeah. As but, I think about it, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, those are bats. Yeah. Like that whole thing, like that too, again, 
it started to get a little bit slow, just like for some reason their communicators don't work. So they can't, uh, don't have their universal translators, excuse me, don't work. So they can't understand what the hell they're saying. And, you know, it was getting a little tired at that point because Gamora, they basically kidnapped Gamora. They won't let her go back to the Ravagers because it's like, no, 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 there's no time. And it's like, the ship is massive now. That I did like that a lot, by the way. I like the, uh, the designs of the ship throughout the mm-hmm. series. Mm-hmm. And like, this ship is humongous. And it's like, you mean to tell me you don't have a pod? Just throw her in the pod. You're like, you're kidnapping yeah. her because you want her memories to come back. But that's not how it works. Yeah. Uh, and then she kind of, she, she sends out a signal to a Ravager who, by the way, we forgot about Adam Warlock after that first five seconds. Uh, you almost kept saying though. it and then like kept stopping. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Uh, you find out that he's pretty much half-baked. He's a child. Yeah. He's not fully developed, which, yeah. okay, cool. And uh, anyway, Gamora sends a signal out to a Ravager to come get her, but the signal's actually going to uh, Adam Warlock and uh, his mother, who I forget her name, her character's name, the gold woman from the first, from the second movie, excuse me. Yeah. So now that brings, uh, that gets him on the way there for the third act. Everybody's, you know, everybody's, it's time for, uh, mayhem and a couple of redemption arcs and some more feelings i guess right Mm -hmm. and uh we get something you have feelings about we get the un unbleaked uncut off by the credits f-bomb of the marvel movie Mm -hmm. and uh i don't know it again like it seems like they had in the first movie they had so much world building and so like, you know, like, like even uh, Glenn close to it though. They called him, she called the somebody a, a prick or an asshole. It's like, they could have, they, I thought they could have made up some alien word and saved, uh, the, not that I'm mad that they used the F bomb. I just think it had more of a place in like the new daredevil or yeah. hell, even captain America and the winter soldier, you know, like Bucky to drop it, you know, or something. Uh, it felt a little out of place there. It, it it was like a, it was almost like a joke used in an inappropriate scene, like 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 murders happening and somebody drops a dad joke. Like it, it just was like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But whatever they did it, and then uh, for some reason we have, they, again, you have a ship. You can't tell me you don't have cover bikes. Quill decides to steal the Bat family's seventies uh, looking Ford car yep. mm-hmm. and he can't drive so that's a little bit more comedy for no reason whatever finally we get to the high evolutionary ship and that i think that's when all the action kicks off for both quill and groot and uh then eventually back at the ship for nebula with adam warlock mm-hmm. and then uh i will try to summarize it because i can't but that just that whole thing, like that started, that was like, all right, now this movie is picking up. That's getting going. So, you know, it sucks. You have a chunky middle to get through, but then the end, I think, was pretty much all gravy. It's all paying off. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Even them walking out the ship with their uniforms on when they land on the planet, I was like, oh, this, this seems logical after the first act of the movie where they're like, all right, we got a job to do. Let's do it. Guardians are back or whatever. Fly yeah. off land. Now they're in suits like that. To me, that seemed like a really easy jump. But then the second part happens. The The second part of the movie, second act. Oh, oh the second. They didn't, yeah, yeah, but they yeah, put yeah. The movie. You confuse me because they put the suits on in the third act. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, yeah, the first act, saying- the first act ends. We're going right. to save Rocket. Fly off. Oh, and then the second act happens, and they do the spacesuit thing, all that s- silliness to get the Gamora. Then the third act happens. They land. They're coming out as a team, all serious. Now we're in the Guardian suits. Like that makes sense as a transition following the first act. So it, it, that oh, I see. to me I it see. further makes it seem like. The second act was filmed much later on. We got to fill space and time, dump it in here. Because they're just like, because now, because now even Quill's just like, oh, I got, I got a job to do. I can't, I can't be a drunk anymore. 
And then you have like yeah. superhero movies do it all the time, right? Like Daredevil season one. Like the big thing was like, like now, now he's serious. Now I've got to take it to the next level, bust out a new suit. Um, I don't know. Superman, like he he's tired of running in Man of Steel. I've got a job to do, bust out new sh- new suit. That's what this felt like. Now it's time to get serious, bust out new suit. Okay, no, I'm with you. Now. I think I I miss I must have misheard you. But you I misheard you. My apologies. It makes sense. And holy shit, he just made a Man of Steel reference in a positive light. Wow. I like that the internet like was kind of choppy rare. there, so I don't think we heard what you said. It's fine. You don't have wow. to repeat it. Wow. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we're losing okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair because you actually have a soundboard and I just have my head. <laughs> You're abusing your power, Steve. You said you wouldn't abuse your power anymore. Don't you remember what happened? You, just, yep. you were talking about him. You brought him up. Guy in a big black suit. Shitty breathing. Yep. Although true. a suit like that to protect me from all the pollen does kind of seem cool. It does seem like a good idea, uh, yeah. So, anyway, so they go to the ship. They, they, they the pull ship. up. Toka, um, and Bebop like, and Rocksteady well, are waiting for them at the gate. <laughs> yes, exactly. They uh, Nebula can't come in because she's a weapon. Uh, Quill's given weapons to, Ro- to Quill. Blah, blah, blah. Quill has given rep- weapons to Groot. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, I don't know how, by the way, real quick, do you think he's going to, is, we're never getting back to that original version of Groot that we saw, I guess. Like, his body keeps changing. Like, I thought he was going to be fully grown this time. Uh, but he's got more powers this time, too, because early, going way back, Groot is beheaded. Mm-hmm. And the head can grow the body back in a day mm-hmm. or something. Didn't yeah, you, was that was a little weird, too. It's like, yeah. why do that at all? Because you spent... You know, he'd spent a whole movie and then a whole, you know, Infinity War and everything else growing again. Yeah. But suddenly he's okay to just yeah. do it in a day. Yeah. So now Groot was a little overpowered too. But uh, yes, Quill and Groot go into the high evolutionary ship. You know, Quill could just keep saying, I have a plan, I have a plan, you know, this and that. And uh, it turns out to be a traditional Star-Lord plan where uh, he gets his ass kicked for a little while. Uh, the high evolutionary gets bored of him, you know, goes to, he's like, get, probably gave some, I forgot, probably gave some order to like, you know, kill him or put him in jail or something. And as he's leaving, then Quill and Groot uh, bust out the weapons. They get mm-hmm. the the guy who has the computer in the side of his head with Rocket's code. Mm-hmm. And the ship at this point is taking off because Quill is, you know, throwing some shit at uh, the high evolutionary saying like, oh, well, you know, your perfect planet has, you know, meth dealers and stuff like that. And you find out that not for the first time, the high evolutionary is going to destroy counter earth and kill all the inhabitants. Even the good ones like that bad family seem like they were, you know, a nice mid lower middle class, uh, suburban family, but they're gone too. Mm-hmm. no, uh, no room for any of them with a the high evolutionary. And, uh, yeah, so he's going to destroy the earth and he does. It's like, wait a minute, did they, the Guardians, what? Like, they just said, ah, eh, not even going to worry about this planet. Yeah. Like, even though saving planets was supposedly their thing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was only the whole point of the third act of volume one. Uh, mm-hmm. But no, they just let this planet go. And they never really mentioned it again. I mean, granted, mm-hmm. it's a third act, so there's not a lot of time left. But like that, I was just like, that. I, had, I was, it weird. was a head scratcher. I'm like, did are we just not going to acknowledge this? Mm-hmm. We're just moving right along to save Rocket. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I think they, I think they, they treated that planet the same way that um, the High Evolutionary did. Like it was just an experiment. Like it wasn't. It's almost like they treated it like it. It wasn't a real people, which was weird. Yeah. Exactly. It was incredibly weird, especially because again, a little bit later on they save his other creations that were still aboard yep. the ship. Yep. Like a, a race of children. Mm-hmm. So that was like, all right, guys, you're kind of selective in your guardian thing, but whatever. And then uh, while they're doing their thing on the ship, Gamora uh, gets visited by Adam Warlock and they have, and also the, uh, the pig or the whatever. 
mm -hmm. thing that he created. The pig of the high evolutionary flew off to go get Rocket because why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have, and then so now Gamora has her uh, her thing with with the pig and with Adam Warlock. Everybody's getting a fight scene except for uh, Drax, Mantis, and Gamora. They're kind of just chilling out during this little interaction right now. They're saving themselves for the hallway scene. Uh, Quill's bright idea was to tackle the guy out a window that they needed with the with the code, which was cool. Yeah, that's and then a good it's, it's it was a really good segment, but then it started another set of head scratching series of events. He had rocket boots. He used to have rocket boots. Those are just gone. Yeah, his helmet is just gone. He never puts the helmet on once in the movie, and yep. it's going to be pretty critical in a few seconds why uh, why why that helmet should have stayed around mm -hmm. uh because eventually uh they go so the ship goes into space gamora drax and mantis are on like the movie should have ended but gamora drax and mantis think quill is still on the ship so they break onto the ship and you know then they have to then it's a reverse like because now quill and everybody has to go rescue those three mm -hmm. and at a certain point they're fighting in space and uh, or they're in space and Quill is just human in space and we don't do well in space. And it's like, wow, why does he just not have his helmet anymore? That would yep. be, you, you took time for him to suit up you, yep. and he put weapons on. You didn't take any time for him to think, let me just slip. It's a dot on the back of my neck. Yeah. Yeah. Let me yeah. Just put that on. Yeah. That was, that was dumb. And I thought that was just like trying to create drama for, for no and it didn't work like that. Yeah. That's the one part of the third act that once it got going, that took me out of it where I was just like, you almost have him die in space, but you did that again. Again, you did that. You did that in the first yep. one. Yep. Why? Why are you doing this? You know it, uh, that actually kind of got spoiled for me in a commercial before the movie. They did a they did an ad or something, and it was showing the I think the Legos. Yeah, it was a Lego commercial, and they showed one of the things you can build was the helmet. And it said the Infinity Saga Star-Lord helmet. And I was like, why wouldn't they label that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 helmet unless it's not in the movie? And it's sure mm. enough, not in the movie. Oh, well, there you go. I didn't... Yeah. That was ridiculous. But, yeah. uh... but it, 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 I mean, that's been, I think, a universal why do that. Like, you know, one, I got, taking it back to Star Wars, I got a, a Leia flashback on that one where i was like oh my god is he gonna fly through space all of a sudden um oh yeah and then yeah, the return of his powers yeah and then the other thing was in the the star fight leading up to them boarding his ship they like there are scenes where they're all like in space without breathing apparatuses like uh, one of those monsters breaks into Rocket's uh, cockpit. Like, the glass breaks open. And he's just yes. there, like, breathing. No no laser shield blocking or anything. So, I was like, again, leading into that final part when he's running, I'm like, oh, space, I guess, isn't really, like, that much of a thing in this in this version of the movie. Um, I mean, they had the spacesuits, but it, it wasn't going to play a factor. And then it did, and I was like, Wait, but you didn't, you, I don't know. It was just weird. It, it, maybe yeah. it wasn't intentional. Maybe he was supposed to, maybe the fight, the star fight was in high, alti uh, high altitude or supposed to be. But graphically, they made it space by mistake. But that maybe, was all but that's a hell of a thing. To, that, that would be a hell of a thing for uh, the editors and gun to miss in post. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no, yeah. sh there's no, what? But yeah. Anyway, they did that. So, but the rest of the again after the once they get past the Bat family and minus the uh, the fact that Quill didn't just die immediately in space and didn't use his helmet, the third act just the third act fucks. Yeah. For, I mean, <laughs> that like I said that like Rocket gets like uh, Rocket has his. Uh, near death moment and meets Lila and his friends in the afterlife. And you're mm -hmm. like, Oh shit, they're going to kill rocket. But you're like, you know, again, I, I'm getting emotional again. And then Lila's like, yeah, yeah. But you know, you can not come yet. hang out, but not, but not yet. 
boom, yeah. back to his body because Quill yeah. is beating on his chest to try to, like, you know, you find out Quill really likes him. And it's kind of like the reverse of when uh, in uh, Endgame, Rocket is wearing Quill's scarf or something mm-hmm. something of Quill's as a, as a scarf to uh, because he misses his friend so much. He's Him and Nebula are alone. Uh, and then they go off and they do their guardian shit. And Gamora at this point has just temporarily re- rejoined the group because she got her ass kicked a couple times too. And now she just, you know, I guess she just wants to fight and she's seeing, you know, they, they have her, it's weird that they have her warm up a little bit only to potentially never see her again. Yeah. But it is what it is. Uh, yeah. She kind of warms up cause she spent, uh, she spent her, fight of the third act alone fighting adam warlock and the, the warthog thing from the high evolutionary to save rocket so now she's invested she got drawn back in uh and yeah just you guys listening you have to see the movie if only for the hallway fight yeah. it's I, i'm not even going to try to summarize that one if you want to feel free but it was just amazing no i really i good. think the 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 weird part was finding out it was a single shot because i was like that takes a hell of a lot of planning to be able to figure out, all right, we have to move the camera, you know, in this motion, one steady motion, this fighting's happening, have the actors fighting nothing because it's all CGI villains, but then yeah. also make sure we have the proper lighting so that when an explosion happens, that light's hitting the, the actor's face when it's supposed to, you know, we're panning the camera off of the actor's, into air at this time because that's where a CGI rocket's going to be at some point to then come back. Like I thought it was really impressive to, to hear after the fact it was a single yeah. shot. Well, no, when, yes, it is incredibly. And I'm going to find it something to read about it too. <laughs> after we get done with this, cause uh, I like, I like, like Sal, I like reading about uh, how they do all that stuff. And obviously mm-hmm. daredevil is the big, uh, the big one that comes to mind for one shot action scenes mm-hmm. of late. So, and just hearing how they did that in like the behind the scenes is, it's really cool. And like you said, the fact that they don't have, <laughs> he has, Daredevil has bad guys there that he's punching. Yeah. There's no CGI yeah. bikers or whatever, but these guys like really kudos to them for uh, pulling it off and making it look as good as it did. For everybody listening, I think the best one to watch is how they did the one take for the prison break in season three, because in that one, they explain how they use multiple actors to play like the same person as they go room to room. And then like, you know, Charlie, it's like Charlie's face, right? He's punching the guy. They crash through a door and then Charlie stands up. You see the back of his head hitting somebody, but that's a stunt guy. Cause now Charlie has run around. The actual actor has run around to get to the next part where they flip through a door and now, now Charlie's there throwing that same punch. Like it's, it's pretty cool to see how they do that. Yeah. No, it's, it's a lot of fun, the behind the scenes stuff for stuff like that. I think. Yeah. And you think yeah. so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, naturally you know, in the hodgepodge way that I usually do this, we've gotten kind of through the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rocket has, as uh, Rocket has his, hero moment mm-hmm. as we said before because he eventually comes face to face with uh the high evolutionary and kicks his ass and but ultimately well ultimately doesn't directly kill him i forgot that i could have sworn i would have sworn up and down that he shot him so i'm glad you're here to save me from making an ass in myself any more yeah. than i usually do uh and then yeah just what do you call it they save, not only did they save uh, the children, there's children on the high evolutionary ship, like we mentioned. I was like, I was like of course there's children on the ship. Yeah, because there has to be some. <laughs> Every movie now. It, it, but it, it would have been fine. Like, they didn't need that. It could. It didn't need to be so many. It could have been just, like, one more creation that he made. Mm. And then all the, like, all the animals that they saved, that was enough for me. Like, yeah. that was, that was it. And, uh, by the way, not because we didn't like it, or at least not because I didn't like it. I'm realizing now we didn't mention uh, Kraglin and Cosmo the space dog this entire mm. time. Yep. And I like that interaction. Uh, James Gunn's brother, Sean, I think is Kraglin, Sean also Gunn, yeah. the motion capture guy for, uh, he's the motion capture guy for Rocket. Mm-hmm. 
in all three movies and probably Infinity War and Endgame. Mm-hmm. That was pretty like that was it was like they were the comedy relief I think and and they worked like I was laughing like and I thought it was I thought it was fu- I thought it was funny when uh so Cosmo can talk Cosmo has like tech that lets her I think it's a she yep speak and uh you know Craglin's still having trouble with the arrow and Cosmo has telekinesis and she shows him up but uh you know it's funny because even though she's intelligent and has these powers she's still just a dog and he still and Craglin gets pissed off. And calls her a bad dog, and she is just like hurt the entire movie. Yeah, like to the point where, like you know, later on they're having a card game, and she's still whining about it. And Craglin doubles down and calls her a bad dog again, and she's just like, I think she falls over. She lays her head down on the table. Yeah, and I thought that I thought that whole that whole thing was funny, and it was cool because uh, they gave the dog a hero moment of of uh, her own because what they bring. Spoilers, and that's what I've said. Spoilers, spoilers the entire spoilers. time. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I keep feeling the need to say. I like it. you say spoilers, uh, like after we have ruined the spoilers, entire like movie. Twenty minutes, 30, 40, 50 <laughs> minutes into this conversation, they uh, at the start of the, of the final space battle, nowhere actually jumps in. the The entire thing is a ship, I guess, and they headbutt. In the end, they headbutt the high evolutionary ship to make a bridge. This way, they can get the animals and the kids and the guardians back to nowhere. And I thought that was cool that Cosmo had the uh, hero moment of making a basically, I think she like held them together a little bit and yep. also made like a air pocket. So that was cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I said spoilers like 50 minutes into this. <laughs> uh, am I missing anything major? I think that's more or less the movie. Like I said, at this, this is the point where uh, Quill, the stupid thing where his helmet would have come in handy because he's, of course, the last one who has to make the jump off. Mm-hmm. And he gets delayed because he goes back for his freedom zoom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he gets stuck in space. And how did he actually get back in? Did Gamora save him? Nope. Who Mr. saved him? Mr. Adam. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Adam Warlock yep. uh, ends up flying out and getting him. But not mm-hmm. before his like face blows up because his, yeah. the gas is in his head. Or I thought he was dead. Yeah. I'm I was like, like That's, they're really going to kill him? Dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I was kind of yeah, mad. Seemed, I was kind of mad, not yeah, gonna lie. Like, I, that whole part was like, that was annoying to me. That, like, he should have just made the jump. They, they added that in because he needed another hero moment, I guess, or a hero moment, because it really was a good ensemble up until this point. Uh, well, they needed. I could have done without that. They needed a reason for Adam Warlock to be a good guy because he gets saved at one point and. I think it's rocket that saves him. And he's like, why'd you do that? And they're like, everybody deserves a second chance. And then you need, yeah, it, it was, you need that moment of group. him. Yeah. You need that moment of him to do something good to be like, Oh, he is a good guy. And he does. He can care about these people. Um, and he eventually joins them. Yeah. But he could have also done that by flying over and getting the zoom. <laughs> like, he could, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, not that that would have been like the best way to do it, but I just feel like, I, I don't know, like I'm okay with him having his hero moment and starting his redemption too, but I just felt like they, it was just, like Quill being the guy he saves was dumb. Yeah. I just, you know. Because they had no interaction. Yeah. Him they, saving they Rocket no, would have been better. Yeah, that would have been much better or him going back for one more kid or anything else, but it just, again, because you're a human who's operated in space for years. It seems stupid that your new suit wouldn't have some sort of onboard life system like your friggin' helmet had. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. And then, it's your gimmick. Uh, I mean, it's like your total gimmick. Yeah. It, it's your whole thing. And then that's pretty much it for volume three. We have, uh, they wrap everything up. Quill decide, you know, everybody, they disband. The yeah. band breaks up. Uh, Nebula is going to go off and be basically the mayor of nowhere. Mm-hmm. She's not going to be an active guardian anymore. Mantis decides she has to go off on her own because she's been doing what the guardian or she was been doing what ego and then what the guardians wanted her whole life. Drax wants to go with her, but she's like, you know, she's pissed off at him a little bit and uh, says no. And he actually Nebula who was softened up to Drax 
convinces him to stay because he has he uh, has a good inter- interaction with the kids that they just saved. So he speaks their language. She's like, no, no, no. He speaks their language, and she's like, you know, I thought you were an idiot, but you're actually supposed to be a father. Which I was like, is that a comment that if you want to be a father, you're an idiot? Yeah. Because I think the uh, I think the rapidly graying hair on uh, our casual friend Josh will. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh. So they're staying on nowhere. Quill hands over the Guardians to Rocket, and uh, he decides he's going to go back to Earth. And that's pretty much it. Nebula goes back to the Ravagers, and I, for some reason, I don't know if it was just me, I thought we were going to get a reveal that like Nebula and Stallone's character were a couple now. Like when they walked in, and he's like, I love when his you arms said that. Open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he throws his arms open to hug her, I was just like, uh oh. Are we about to? Is she with him now? And she did. They just hug. Like he's just happy that she's back with the group. And you find out, like in her post, uh, not post credit scene, but in her end credits um, montage, she's actually really happy with the with the Ravengers. She's laughing. She's hugging them all. She seems mm-hmm. like she's having a, a great time, like the other Gamora had with the Guardians. So that mm-hmm. was nice. Everybody gets their nice little wrap up moment. And do you think so? There's two post post credit scenes. Let's go to the last one. Uh, first the last mm-hmm. one is quill and his grandpa sitting in the kitchen quill is eating cereal was there any easter egg that you missed because he's complaining about having to mow the neighbor's lawn and i feel like everything usually has some sort of purpose was that just a throwaway or is there something i'm missing um nobody has identified because i went back and watched to get like i said easter egg videos nobody has said like oh the the mowing the lawn is a reference to this or Anything of that sort. The only Easter egg there was the newspaper article that says Kevin Bacon talks about being abducted. That one I caught on my own. I didn't uh, Easter egg for I that. I didn't catch that. Um, yeah, it's the it's the cover page when he's holding the newsletter or the newspaper. Huh. Um, but that aside, there was nothing there outside of just identifying that Quill's going to continue to have his own story. Hmm. Right, yeah, because they end it with a star, the legendary Star Lord will return. Which mm-hmm. I was when it, when I saw that, and I've se- I've heard his comments about not returning for money. I was like, uh oh, yeah. did they have already something in the works? But whatever. And then the first post credit scene is basically they set up a new Guardians of the Galaxy. It's Rocket, it's Groot, it's uh, yep. Kraglin, Cosmo, and one of the kids that they rescue, mm-hmm. and you know Rocket. He's they're keeping the music tradition alive. Rocket has the zoom. He puts on a song before they have uh, their battle. Uh, I think it's cool, but I don't believe for a second that that's going to be like the crew for volume four. I, I yeah. don't think Marvel has enough guts to do it. I don't think they're going to keep it. You? No. It, it, I mean, again, they shoot they shoehorn in a kid because that's what they're just doing now. Every team has a kid that's doing something. And I know the kids in the story as um, she's she's Drax's daughter, so she she at various times takes on different mantles. But I was like, eh, I don't think anybody really cared. And Adam Warlock being a guardian, I was like, yeah, oh, sure. Adam too, yes, yeah. I, I think hope they, I hope. Sorry, no, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, I hope, like, I hope they don't overdo it because, like, the him being like him have hatched too soon and being like a little bit not like just a little bit like he's a kid so he's yeah. a little bit behind like you know the uh the, uh, the sovereign i think that was her name who he calls mother the entire time mm. wants him to like beat the hell out of the ravager who uh had the communicator that she talks to gamora with mm-hmm. and she's like show him we mean business and he kills him yeah and like you're like what the hell and he's like uh you know and he's a kid he didn't know like i hope that mm-hmm. they very quickly advanced past that because that worked for this movie i can't see it being anything other than annoying for too many movies going forward yeah yeah so that that's the only thing i hope for him yeah i the one thing that i took away from him after the movie was done was i think he would have been a better like i would have i would preferred him being swapped in for everything we saw captain marvel like he actually can take damage he actually can die 
but he's also super strong, can breathe in space, you know, shoot mm-hmm. lasers. So I was like, I feel like he would have been a better person to loop into Endgame and maybe have his own movie than Captain Marvel because in Endgame she was just kind of hanging out because they were they didn't know what to do with her because they're like she's too strong. Like Thanos can't even hit her. So it's like you could have just had him in there, just like in the comic books, he's involved. And yeah. I would have believed more there's a struggle than knowing she's around somewhere and she could just, you know, wreck a ship and all that stuff. Yeah. I liked him. I know I know people had issues with him. Uh but one of the videos I did watch, they pointed out that in the comics when Adam Warlock first debuted he was very immature. So that's probably where James Gunn was going with it. Oh, okay. But I was, I was about to say, I don't know, but that's good to know. Yeah. So I understand why people are, are mad, but I liked, I liked him. And I also just don't expect anything, you know, more of, of Marvel at this point. Like they bring out a character. It's got the same name. I pretty much ride with that's where the similarities end. Same name looks similar. That's it. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, I mean, I, I I think it was a good introduction. The only the only time I've met Adam Warlock in comics is I think during Infinity Gauntlet, and that mm-hmm. was like based on that. I was like, oh wow, they completely butchered this character. Yeah. But uh, no, guess not. They just went with an earlier version, which is good and pretty great. Allegedly. So, allegedly. Any final thoughts? No, I, you know, I would have given that movie a nine. Without the second part of the movie, um, I would have, like I said, I I thought there was things that were forced in there for no reason. But all of that is strictly nitpick. I think overall, fantastic movie. Great watch. Not required to see in theaters is probably the biggest, the biggest note. But otherwise, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, same. And I think I gave it a nine just because uh, I was, I don't know. I, I the last part middle dra- this, le- the last part is very strong and also yeah. I am a, like I am a Nathan Fillion fan like I want him as, I wanted him as Green Lantern or something after yeah. his voice acting as a character for years so I am a fan of his so like I liked seeing him but critically he was wasted he was a waste but also because I'm not as mad that him and I'm not too like I'm annoyed by that scene that middle rather but I'm not the rest of the movie, and especially, like you just said, the third act was so strong. I think I'm going to stick with the nine for me. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I hope this really, I mean, if Rocket or Groot come back, that's one thing. But I hope that that version of the Guardians, I think this was a very good send off. There's no need to like bring them back in Secret Wars or anything, unless they do cameos as pe- for people, like, you know, alt- for variants. But even then, like, that would just be taking away from the new guys who you're trying to prop set up not prop up set up mm-hmm. so yeah but uh but yeah so thank you very much and uh by the way folks i'm using a new microphone so in the comments in addition to telling us what you like didn't like what you think of our comments about the movie please tell me if my sound sounds a little bit better and while you're doing things for us please Join the Neuroaffiliated Army. Visit the link to the shop down below. We have tons of good stuff. Uh, summer's coming. There's tank tops in there. Sun's out, guns out. That's the motto of the, of, uh, the rest of the summer. Or the summer, excuse me. I have to work on my promos. I would never make it in the WWF or E. <laughs> uh, and yeah. We'll uh, talk to you guys in the next video. Play us out, Steve, please. Mm-hmm.